Hello guys, my name is Desmond, a very warm welcome to my lesson for today, where we will be looking at your mathematics, so ladies and gentlemen, please do allow me to say, it is very much important that I say, it is very, very much important because what I'm about to say, it's Massively, 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 massively. Temba. Massively important, ladies and gentlemen, that I say a day without learning something new. It's a day wasted. By so saying, often say, please. Please, 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 please do make sure that by the end of each and every lesson that I conduct, you learn something new. Very, very much important, ladies and gentlemen, over there. So I'm thinking this lesson, since we are on trigonometry, let's try to actually have a look at question number four. And then we will actually work in the backwards direction. But most importantly, I would like for you guys to remember that this is actually a warm up. So when it comes to uh, our extra weekend classes, uh, these are for you guys to learn ahead. So most importantly, whatever that we have started, we will still have to do a re, I mean, to redo this in our uh, Monfry lessons. But most importantly, this is a warm up and we will be getting to some complicated stuff as we continue. But generally, let's quickly go through all those questions sent in the group just to bring you guys on the move. So let's see. Question number four. It says uh, in the diagram below, Maybe let me quickly draw that diagram they are referring to. So remember, guys, uh, this is not the starting point of this chapter. I have already started with this chapter, and you might need to uh, quickly catch up on those lessons that I have done. But I will just uh, somewhere, somehow give you guys a very quick um a uh, what is it we'll just recap on what we have actually uh, learned previously so a uh, this is the question that we will be doing a uh, we've got point a there we've got point b there we have c there we have d there we have e there so this is what i'm going to do quickly read through the given statement being 4.1 and then very quickly, we will have a look at those questions. But most importantly, in case if you've got a question, make sure to unmute your mic and feel free to interrupt. Most importantly, remain muted in case if you've got no question. So 4.1 in the diagram below, A, B, C. Okay, let's see. A, B, C. A, B, C. E C where is A A E No no A E Hey Kwenze kantoni auti ngicale kakhulu sha In the diagram below A B C okay A C D okay and uh, A C no, no, D, E, A, right, angled, triangle. I do agree with that statement. You see, this triangle, that triangle, and that triangle, those are right angled triangle. How do I know? It's because I see that sign of 90 degree. So, that means every time when you see a sign of 90 degrees, it simply means you are allowed to use the trigonometric ratios, which could be sine, cos, 
Tan. And lastly, you can use theorem of a Pythagoras. So at all the times, guys, when you see that sign or they say a triangle, it's a right angled triangle. They are simply saying all the questions, you can answer those using those trick ratios. But before I even go deeper, let me quickly remind you guys that we have what we call the trigonometric ratios. It's actually this three. And we have what we call the reciprocals being cosec, sec, and um, what else? Cot. So you need to know that uh, the cousin of sine is uh, cosec. The cousin of cos is sec. The cousin of tan is cot you will have a better understanding of how uh, to work those when we solve for some questions. But most importantly, let me complete that to say this is 20. We know 20 is actually the length between B and C. And then we have 30 there, and then we have 60 there. So notice how I write that 30 is 30 degrees because it's an angle. And then now, um, AD is actually 60 units. It's a length. So let's see. The statement continues to say, uh, in triangle BAE, they say angle A, it's equals to 90 degrees. Let's see in triangle BAE. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So they're saying in that triangle of A, B and E, meaning this is the hypotenuse, of which you don't have the line for the hypotenuse, but it's actually from that point connecting to that E. That is the triangle that they are talking about, and they are seeing this angle A is 90 degrees. So don't get confused by that statement. So let's see. They continue to say, and B in triangle BAC, that's how you call this thing, in triangle BAC, angle A, because of that, it is the one which they say is 30 degrees, which is that one there. And BC, so uh, under analytical geometry uh, or a uh, trigonometry, when something is written in capital letters, and it's two letters, you know they are referring to the length or the distance. But if it's three letters, for example, that one, this is where they are saying in this triangle. And then the moment they do that, they are saying this angle in that triangle. So just always remember those and be able to interpret those. So let's see. Um, they are saying BC is equals to 20 units. BC is equals to 20 units, okay? And then AB, no, no, AD is equals to 60 units. So let's see. Now, the first question says calculate the, uh, let's see, that is 4.1.1. They are saying calculate the length of AC. Calculate the length of a C. This is what you should always ask yourself. Remember, guys, I'm well aware that this type of questions to some of you guys may not be uh, that much complicated. This is why uh, I'm just going to explain all those answers and I will only allow you guys to interrupt in case if you did not understand or you seek further clarity, just so that we can save time. At edit log is going to be load shedding on my side, so I will try to make sure that I squeeze in as as many information as possible within this allocated a uh, time for today's lesson. So, the length of AC. So here comes the question: um, In which triangle can I find the length of AC? Will it be in triangle ACD or ABC? So you realize that in this triangle of ACD, you don't have enough information, but in this one, you've got enough information. Remember, a trigonometry is a measure of triangle. So that means we study the relationship between the sides and 
the angles. We only have three angles and three sides. But most importantly, to answer questions related to a right angle, the triangle, you only need two things to calculate the third unknown. So obviously, let's see, you need to ask yourself this question. Is it the opposite that you're looking for? Is it the hypotenuse or is it the adjacent? You realize um, this is where the 90 degrees is and then you have this which is opposite to that angle and then that being opposite to that is your hypotenuse. Then which trigonometric ratio has um, opposite and hypotenuse? Let's see, we've got a ta, ta, noa, we've got a sinoa, we've got a ko, za, oh, za, sino, sino, there it's not a, but it's h. Yes, a ta, noa, sino, then let's see, which one has um, opposite and hypotenuse? Opposite and hypo, so that means we're going to use uh, the trigonometric of sine, we're going to say um, sine of an angle. Sine of an angle, it is the one which is equals to O for opposite over H for hypotenuse. We obviously know what the angle is. It is 30 degrees and opposite to that, it is 20 over height. But now let's write it in terms of the letters, which is um, a, C. Can you guys see? Um, when it comes to this type of questions, uh, it has to be easy in a sense that you just cross multiply. You've got a fraction this side. Let's fractionalize this side and divide it by one because we know that one doesn't change anything. Then you see this by that, that by that. It's more like you're having a C sine of 30 degrees, which is equals to 20. But remember, this is what you are looking for. That is why you will deliberately divide both sides by sine of 30 degrees. Why did you have to divide by that? It's so that this cancels and then you remain with AC, which is equals to uh, the answer that you get when you punch all of that. So let's see, you're having 20 over a uh, sine of 30 degrees. Uh, let's see, I might need to uh, close that bracket. I'm getting 40, no, no, not 40 degrees, but 40 units. Uh, did that make sense to, uh, but I think this one, it made sense. Uh, it was actually a straightforward um, question. So I'm just going to write an answer uh, for that and say we are having that being 40 there. So anyone who's got a question, Bandi Bagichi, on that one, or did it make sense to everyone? question from Mazarsi. Makes sense. Okay. 100%. So uh, for every answer that we get, uh, just note it down. Remember, guys, this is just an introduction. We are not really doing anything there. So just in case if it feels like it's confusing, uh, make sure uh, to raise your hand so that we can further explain. But most importantly, make sure that you catch up because uh, on our next lesson, that's when we go deep into some complicated uh, problems. Whatever we are doing, uh, um, just a warm-up. So quickly, let's have a look at 4.1.2, which says size of, can you see, examiner just says size of this thing. When we go deeper, guys, I won't be emphasizing the fact that this thing, you call it in triangle C, A, D, what is angle A? So let's see, in triangle A, C, A, D, what is angle A? So can you see, this is actually the angle that they are looking for. So now in that triangle, let's see what are we having there. We have 90 degrees there, we have 40 there, we have 60 there, and then angle A is what we are trying to calculate. So. Let's see which trig ratio has this is adjacent and that is a uh, opposite. I think it's cos. 
because I know cos is cosine. So that means cos of angle A is going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So what is adjacent? Maybe let's draw it away substitute. Can you see? This is your adjacent being 40 over hypotenuse being 60, meaning angle A is actually equals to that second function of a that over that. So can you see? That's how you actually remove a trick ratio by doing the arc cos or second function of that ratio. Whatever answer that you get, it means is your angle over there. So let's quickly check. Second function of cos a 40 a over 60. It's equal. This is what I'm getting. I'm not sure if you guys are getting the same answer there. Is that what you guys are getting there? Guys, is this what you are getting? Silence. Sure. I'm no longer sure if you guys are able yes, to sir. hear me. Okay. 100%. Remember, Umi, the reason why we are using the trick ratios is because we are dealing with right angled triangle so that is the reason why only if you are not dealing with the right angled triangle then you work those differently so let's see very quickly let's move on to a 4.1.3 which says the length of de length of de hmm um, anyone would like to suggest how can we possibly calculate the length of ED? Anyone would like to give it a try? In case you've got no idea, a mention to say no idea. But most importantly, guys, remember during examination time, a, you are not allocated time to think, unfortunately. You are only allocated time to write. So when they say an, a paper is a, a three-hour paper, they know a, it's going to take you a, a maximum of three hours to complete writing a, answers to those questions. So that means you don't have time to be thinking. A, you don't have time to be uh, trying to guessing you are only allocated time uh, to write what you know so anyone would like to give it a try that one cabello uh, no idea you can sir yes you can get the angle of uh, DAE by subtracting, by subtracting the 30 degrees and the 48,19 that we got from the 90 because angle A is 90 degrees. Yes, yes. Then we use tan, theat, yes. uh, tan that angle. Yes, yes. Uh, this honorable member is very, very smart. I'm telling you. Um, she remembered that they said that angle is 90 degrees in triangle A, B, and E. They did say this is 90 degrees. So you already calculated this angle being 30 degrees. You also calculated that angle, which is 48 point one nine degrees so that means since the total angle it's actually 90 degrees so that means for you to know what that angle is you're just going to say 90 degrees you minus 30 degrees you minus 48.9 degrees whatever that you get it is that angle and you already have that 60 degrees then that's when you can worry about whether to use cos turn or sign it will all depend on what size you are looking for 
Uh, before I work it out, uh, do you guys understand what Honorable Member has done over there? Or does it not make sense um, to some of you guys? I, I understand, sir. 100%. So what is that answer there? Let's quickly check. Uh, 90 minus 30 minus 48.19. Uh, this is what I'm getting. Is is it what everyone is getting there? Hmm? Yes, sir. Okay. So that means we are having 11.81 degrees there. So that means the trigonometric ratio that we're going to use is tan uh, because it is the one that has a opposite and this is adjacent so that means our angle there it's 11.81 degrees which is equals to opposite being a de or ed over a adjacent being a 60 there so can you see you can still say you fractionalize and then you cross multiply so what is one times ed it is just ed which is equals to that by that you get 60 a multiplying turn off one one comma eight one degrees then you punch all of that on your calculator let's see 60 a turn of one one point eight one a close there what are you guys getting this is what i'm getting 12 comma five a let's say a five and then you just say units because it is not the angle that you were calculating. Uh, does it make sense to everyone? Yes. Okay, 100%. So very quickly, let's move on to a uh, 4.2. So let's see, uh, I'm about to now remove all of this, and then we move on to a uh, 4.2. So remember guys, this is just um, an introduction. It's more like this is what we call a status uh, in preparation to some more complicated stuff that we'll be doing as we continue. But most importantly, uh, I'm just reminding you that you've got two types of triangles. Uh, one which is just a triangle of which is it could be what? Scalene or isosceles. And then you've got this type of um a triangle which is a 90 degree uh, which has a 90 degree and this is what we call a right angled triangle which means you can use sine cos and tan and also cosec uh, sec and also cot and lastly a theorem of pythagoras you are only allowed to use these things only when you are dealing with a, a right angled triangle but if it is not a right angled triangle then that's where you use those rules which we call the sine rule and the cosine rule uh, sometimes you might need to also use the area rule of which on our next lesson that's when we will go deep i think i will gradually introduce you to uh, this and most importantly i will introduce you to um sketching the trick function so that means on our next lesson uh, most definitely we might be looking at that and also a uh, sketching the trick um functions then that's when i know that it uh, would have covered um the most important parts as far as introduction is concerned so let's see 4.2 they say solve for x correct one decimal places whereby a uh, x is actually a uh, between zero degrees and 90 degrees so it's more like you've been given a hint there to say whatever x value that you get it has to be between um those two angles uh, and most importantly this is less or is equals to which means uh, uh, sorry that angle it can still be zero it can still be 90, but 
uh, it has to be between those. So uh, that means it has to be a um, greater or equals to zero or less or equals to 90 degrees. So let's see, a uh, 4.2.1, this is what we are having tan x which is equals to 2 comma 0 1 um, it does look simple but most importantly in trigonometry what they do they take these simple things and combine them together and ask you questions based on that so never ever underestimate a uh, baby steps if i can put it that way because this prepares you to those complicated stuff so when you do something which is complicated and you don't understand it, just know that it is not the problem that you should be facing. This is where you start and you ask yourself this question. What type of an equation is that? So some of you guys, this is what you are seeing. But for me, I see an invisible positive one there, uh, which is actually multiplying tan x which is to the power of an invisible one which is 2 comma 0 1 then already i know that um this is actually a linear equation which means i'm only going to have one possible answer otherwise you can still write this thing as tan to the power 1 x which is equals to 2 comma a uh, 0 1 so this problem is different from, let's say, for example, tan squared x, which is equals to 2 comma 0, 1. This type of an equation, because of that too, is what we call a quadratic equation, which means you are going to have two possible angles, which are represented by x. If it was 3 there, then it's something else, which means you're going to have three possible values so just always remember that when you are looking at a trick equation um it is an equation but it falls under certain types of an equation so a uh, someone might be wondering why is it being written as tan x a uh, if it's a squared they put a squared there and then they don't write it as tan x squared so for us let's just assume that the possible reason for it to be written in that manner it's because we know that this is tan x actually there's a degree there so that's why we put two there instead of us having to write zero and then we square there it's more like this square it's actually for that angle there so don't get confused when something is written like that um it simply means tan a um, x squared or otherwise it means tan x multiplying tan x because two means two of the same thing multiplying each other so i'm pretty much sure that you will understand um when i say for you to remove that tan you divide both sides by tan a uh, so that you remove that tan and you, you, you remain with x. Can someone punch 2 comma 0 1 divided by tan? Let's see what you get. Can someone punch that um, so that we can discuss some more on the answer that you get? What does it give you? when you punch 2 comma 0 1 over tan what are you getting there hi bo are you guys gone? Let me see. Sir? Yes. What What are you guys getting? 
So from my side, it gives me like an era. Yes, era. I expected an an era. Gabelo. The reason to that is because a uh, you said two comma zero one over tan. That's not how we remove tan. If it's tan, if it's sine, if it's cos, you don't remove it by dividing. That's why they say you need to say x and then you do arc of that. So just always remember that. Maybe the reason why uh, you guys kept quiet it's because you got an error and you were not sure whether you've calculated uh, incorrectly or not. So that is why um, Matapelo, when you remove a trick ratio being a tan, sine, or cos, when, when, you, when you detach it from the angle, you don't divide. Just like if it was 2x is equals to 4. Here, you just divide by 2 and then that cancels x is equals to 2. But when it comes to trick ratios, you do it this way. So I wanted you guys to always remember this so that when you make a mistake and you get an error, you remember a possible reason to that error. So what are you getting when you punch that one? 3, 63,55. Remember, um, <clears throat> you need to say degrees because that is an angle. So I'm pretty much sure that that calculation made sense to every uh, one. And most importantly, for you to know that your answer is correct, it has to lie between uh, these two angles. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So this prepares you to... Um, I think maybe, let's see, equals to four. Um, let's see. What type of an equation is that? Uh, is it a linear or quadratic? Anyone would like to guess? Linear. 100%. <clears throat> it is a linear because on that trig ratio, we've got an invisible one there. So, uh, do you want to guess what does it mean for it to be a uh, linear? Uh, what does it tell about uh, our final answer? How many final answers are we going to have if it's a linear? An answer. 100%. One answer because of that invisible one. Most importantly, this is what I always say. When you are dealing with a linear equation, you always want to have, let's say, letters on the left and then numbers on the right. This is the format. Uh, uh, honorable member, remember to mute your mic. So let's see. That means you're going to take this to the other side and then you end up having five a cos of angle which is equals two what is four minus two is it not two then can you see this is where you can divide both sides by five why so that this cancels and then you have cos x which is equals to two over five so can you see matapel you are at that stage where you need to remove that trick ratio from that so you don't divide but you're going to say a a second function of that over that. What answer are you getting there? Comma, four, two, three. Uh, can you come again, honorable member? What did you say there? Six comma four two degrees. Sixty-six comma four two degrees. That is an answer that I'm also getting. And I'm sure that's what everyone is getting. So now we are about to work out that last question. But before we do that, anyone who's got a question based on what we have done up to this point?
no question I assume. Um, so let's see. Um, I'm then going to remove all of these and we have a look at that last uh, question. So let's see. A uh, 4.2.3, we've got cosec x over 2 divided by 3. This is what you always want to try and do. Um, you want to try and remove the brackets. How are you going to do that? Since there's a fraction this side, let's try to fractionalize that side. And then we cross multiply, meaning that times that uh, you are having cosec of x, which is equals to that times that, I think that is 6. So remember, who is the cousin of cosec? Anyone who can tell? Sine. Sine, sir. 100%, meaning we are having 1 over sine x, which is equals to 6. Remember, we don't want to be seeing fractions, Pantibakiti. That is why you are going to fractionalize this side. Why? Because you want to cross multiply. So it's more like you're going to say this times that. What is that? Is it not 6 sine x? What is that? times that i think that is one then you want to remove that six so that it cancels meaning you remain with a sine x which is equals to one over six most importantly uh, do not write this thing as a decimal if you punch that and it gives you a decimal just write it as a fraction so that you can actually write your final answer as a decimal and you round it off but most importantly um honorable member has been rounding off to two decimal places um and i've also been uh, writing it down to two decimal places here comes a question did they tell uh, by how much we should round it off Did they tell by how much? Hello. Uh, Tando, did they tell? No, sir. I, I'm I'm not answering regarding to that. I wanted to ask you to please speak closer to your speaker if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking maybe I was looking at the question paper, but let's see. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now, sir. Thank you. Okay, 100%. Just in case if it happens again, maybe try to uh, increase the volume from your side. Um, I'm just not sure what could be the issue today. But in case if my voice is low again, let me know immediately. Uh, we want to try and make sure that we do a perfect recording so that at a later stage, when you catch up, uh, you'll be able to enjoy the lesson. So just in case if a similar thing happens, Bantu Bagiti, to all our new learners, make sure that you let me uh, know immediately. In case if I'm breaking, in case if the screen is blurry, anything related to that, make sure that you make me aware immediately. But I will have to answer myself. So can you see on that statement on 4.2 it says uh, solve for x correct to one decimal place where um, x is between zero and nine so matapelo can you see honorable member uh, our final answers were wrong we were going to get wrong for our final answers why because we rounded everything to two decimal places so it has to be rounded off to a uh, one so um, just make sure to remember that Bandu Bagiti. So let's see, what are, are you guys getting for that one? Let's see. Second function of sine, 1 over 6. Uh, wait. No. Let's see. I'm getting 9,6 uh, degrees. What are you guys getting for that question? Oh, 
10,6 degrees. 10,6. Yes, 100%. So I think with this question, um, we can now, uh, but wait, anyone who's got a question on that one? I think it was a straightforward question. So very quickly, we will therefore move on to a uh, question number three. But most importantly, let's start it at 3.2. Uh, Reason to that, I noticed 3.1, uh, we are given very little marks there. So let's start with 3.2. As soon as we are done with that one, we'll visit 3.1, just in case if um, I just don't want to waste uh, much of our time on 3.1. I want to make sure that we do that one, which looks a bit uh, complex. And then if we still have some time, we'll move on to uh, that uh, 3.1. That. So let's see. 3.2, they're saying uh, S having negative 3 and negative 4, it's a point on the Cartesian plane such that OS makes an angle of theta with the positive uh, that. So this is how I would draw that. You remember most this type of questions is what I think we've done uh, last week. So what I would do, it is to then complete that and make it a right angled triangle where I know that um, Let's see, x is negative 3, meaning this is the side which is negative 3. And then um, y is negative 4. I would write it in that way. Then I know this is uh, the angle. So most importantly, um, here comes a question. Uh, this right angled triangle, is it complete? Uh, no, no, it's not complete because we don't have all the sides. So that is why I would always advise you to make sure that before you even start looking at the questions, uh, you try to check if all the sides are uh, complete. But obviously, when you look at 3.2.1, they are already saying calculate OS. Remember, this is O that is S. So, Sidumil, uh, are we allowed to use cos, sine, tan, or theorem of Pythagoras? If yes, why or how do you know that you are allowed to use those? And that includes sec, cosec, and cot. Do uh, can you please repeat the question? So the question was: uh, Are we allowed to use sine, cos, tan, cosec, sec, a uh, chord, or theorem of Pythagoras? If we are allowed, how do you know, or what gives you the confidence that we can use those? No, say, so can you please explain this for me because I'm not sure about this one. Okay. Um, the reason to that is because of that 90 degree. So that means at all the times, the moment you see that 90 degree sign, it means you are allowed to use those. So that's why a, if a friend, a fellow learner says, how do you know? you must use theorem of Pythagoras. Or who told you that? So you just simply say it's because this is a right-angled triangle why you are allowed to use those. Uh, if it wasn't a right-angled triangle, you were not going to use that. Does it make sense now, honorable member? 
He is staying. Okay, so now let's see. A uh, 3.2.1 says the length of OS. Obviously, OS is a, your radius or your hypotenuse. That is why you're going to use um, that formula where you say, uh, what is X? X is negative three squared. What is Y? It's negative four uh, squared. Remember, OS is what you're trying to calculate. So let's see. That means O S squared, what is this? I think th this is nine and that is 16. So what are those? You minus that into that is 10. 10 plus 15 is 25. So that means O S. Obviously, uh, O S is equals to, then you introduce a square root on both sides. So that means uh, it's actually plus or minus five. But you do know very well that a, it is actually a positive five. Why? Because we've always been saying um, this is always positive. So that is why you're going to say you are having positive five there. Uh, does it make sense to everyone what I've done there? For two marks. Uh, guys, does it make sense before I move on to the next uh, question? Amanda, did you get that one, honorable member? Tilly, Tilly. Yeah, I got it. Tembam, Temban. Uh, did you get that one, honorable member? Yes, I got the number. Okay, 100%. So now, um, let's quickly move on to 3.2.2. Let's see. This is where it might get tricky, but just always remember that. Uh, you will need to remember something. So they're saying the value of sec angle plus sine squared angle this is what examiner wants you to calculate so let's see um what is the ratio for sec uh, for... one over cos okay someone can say one over cos angle a uh, plus sine squared angle but with this type of questions, um, this is where you need to remember that. Let's see. Uh, if you are having cos angle being x over r, and uh, the cousin of cos is a uh, sec, that means actually sec angle, it's actually the vice versa of this, meaning it's r over a x so that means straight away with this type of questions instead of rewriting it as one over cos angle you can just uh, rewrite it in that format the same goes for a what is it a sign you can write it down as part of your notes to say if you have sign being that that means a cosec it is actually r over a y yes and then if you are having tan angle which is y over x when it comes to cot it is actually um x over y so a you can therefore straight substitute it as that that or that a at that stage even if you do it this way you will still get it correct it's just that it's a long time i'm not sure if you guys understand what i'm trying to say there does it make sense to everyone what i'm trying to say there yes sir. okay 100 percent. so now uh, let's maybe try to update that but let me try to make use of this opportunity to show you how it works so can you see it's one over a uh, cos so 
this is actually one what is cos cos is um x over r so can you see this thing is the same as one divided by x over r which is the same as one you multiply and then you do vice versa of those which means it's r over x which means one multiplying by this is the same as just that so that is why i was saying uh, straight away there you can just um say a uh, okay even if you say one over cos angle and then plus then on your next uh, step that's when you can write that ratio uh, there so let's see what will the ratio be so it's more like whichever way it doesn't really matter that much so let's see we say this being sec it's actually what is it r over x and then plus uh, what is the ratio for sine sine i think is sine it's opposite being y over r most importantly you need to square that let's now substitute those values what is r we calculated it to be five what is x it's negative three plus um what is y y it's negative four what is r r is five you close you squared so can you see this one it remains as five of three plus remember at all the times when you are dealing with a mess problem you always look for where you've got the brackets that's your that's your starting point so every time when you have a mess problem and you don't know where to start check if you've got the brackets why because botma says b you start with um the brackets so that is why at all the times if you're given a mess problem and you don't know where to start look for brackets if they are there and then if they are not there you work it out and you end up having the brackets that means you focus on those and anything else you just write it as it is remember laws of exponents we did that uh, in january so that what is a negative four squared is it not positive 16 what is five squared is it not 25 i think that is 25 so now um I'm just not sure of how I'm going to explain this one to you guys. Uh, but let me remove that just to create some space so that I use this site. So do you guys agree that actually uh, this thing is the same as negative 5 over 3 plus 16 over 25? And uh, if you think about it, it's more like this thing is negative two plus one. Is it not the same as one minus two? I think it is because at the end of the day, it gives you negative one as the final answer. But most importantly, with this type of problems, you need to work it out without using a calculator in most cases. So let's try to work it out. So it's more like this is 16 over 25 minus five over two. That's what I'm saying. And if you guys remember, I said when you are dealing with uh, the fractions, you use that. What does it mean? It means you multiply these values at the bottom. So what is that times that? I think that is a uh, 50. Is it not 50? I think it's 50. And then now, what is this times that? I think that is 32. Can you see? a uh, that times that what is the eight there i'm going to need a calculator there i think it's a big number Sir? oh no it's not a uh, hey you scared me honorable <laughs> for the Sir? first time oh, yes. i forgot a uh, hey did i make a mistake yes Sir? Uh, Sir? yes Yebo. yes sir um it's supposed to be um over negative three. Oh yes not two sir yes 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 hundred percent but hey for the first time uh, ever since i've been doing these lessons you know i was busy here talking and i forgot i'm doing a lesson and cheeky cheeky sir hey um the honorable member for the very first time yes sis. 
uh, that means I must always remember that you guys are attending because uh, I completely forgot about you guys. But let's see. So that means this times, I think it's 75. Uh, is it not 75? Yes. Uh, someone was saying something. Hey, I noticed we've got three minutes. Maybe let me quickly work it out. So the sign in between, you use that sign which is there, which is a minus. So now, what is this minus uh, that? Is it not 93? I think that is 93, but which is a negative over 75. So now, 93 divided by 75, I think it ends up being a uh, that. Hmm. So possibly this is your final answer. Let's try uh, to test it. If you want to test it, let's punch all of this, the original, on our calculator and check if we end up getting that. So very quickly, let me try to work it out. So a fraction, no, no, I start with yes, a fraction, then it's five at the bottom, it's negative three. On the side, it's a plus. You open, you say over, negative four. At the bottom, you have five. On the side, you close, and then you say a squared. Hey! Is it over five? Negative four over five? Yes. Hey! Ongati, a senzile ezinye ezinto. Sir, where did we make the, a mistake? There, where is oh, the... Oh, yes. 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 It's, it's, it's actually because of that mistake that I made. So let's quickly correct. So what is that times that? Uh, let's see. Then it's 16 multiplied by 3. So that means it was supposed to be 48 there. Then this is going to change. What is 48 minus that? Uh, I'm glad you guys were able to correct me on that one. Yes, yeah, so can you see? This is this is what I got when I punched all of this. Do you guys agree now? Uh, does it make sense to everyone? Hundred percent. So, um, before yes, before low trading starts. The code for today uh, to show that you've attended today's lesson, uh, we are going to use the values of the special angles. So someone can comment 30, someone can comment 60, someone can comment uh, 45. So that is the code for today's lesson uh, to show that you did attend. I'm pretty much sure that in less than a second, uh, it's going to be dark. But most importantly, let me say uh, here we have cosec 45. This is that next question. And then we have sine 90 degrees tan uh, times tan 60 there. So very quickly, how you work out this problem, um, you will need to remember uh, your special angles where you know that here you actually have one over sine of a what is it 45 degrees and then you can say a, the whole of that divided by sine of 90 degrees times tan of um 60 degrees a, which means um let's see your special angles you've got this one for 45, I think uh, it's one there, one there, and then you have square root of two there. And then you have this one. Where is 60? I think 30 is up there, and then 60 is down there. Where you have, is it one, two, square root of three? Correct me if I'm wrong, but you need to know this by heart because it's not given to you uh, on the formula sheet. You need to always know that by heart. But most importantly, convert this thing into a, a strict ratio. Then, um, let's see. That's when you can start substituting to say 1 over what is the ratio for sine 45? Did, did I make a mistake, honorable member? 
1 over 2 square root of 2. 1 over square root of 2 because it is opposite over hyper. Yes. 1 over square root of 2 over 1, which is the same as that. The whole of that divided by a, what is sign 90? I think sign 90, it gives us a number, guys, which could either be, a, I think, either 1 or negative 1 a, or something of that nature. What is sign 90? I think it's wow. 1. Yes. What about tan 60 or tan sagesti? Let's see. Um, for tan 60, it means we are focusing on this angle, meaning this is adjacent and this is opposite. So it seems like a, a square root of 3 divided by 1, which is just square root of 3. Yes. So can you guys see? It's more like we are actually having 1 a, a over that which is being divided by a, that times that a, is just square root of a 3. So now it's more like you are now having 1 over square root of 2 multiplied by, you remember, when you have a division, you say multiplied by, this is obviously divided by 1. So it's more like you're saying a, that over that which is more like you're saying this times that. So it's more like you're saying one over, uh, you just put it under one square, square root because you have square root, square root, you multiply the insides, which is three times uh, two. What is that? I think that is six. And the rule says you never want to have the square root at the bottom. That is why you are going to multiply this thing by one because one doesn't change anything but that one it's a special one it's a special one because you're going to say square root of six over square root of six do you guys agree that this thing is one square root of six over square root of six because this divided by that it, it ends up being one so that means if you had two over square root of nine not even nine, let's say square root of 19. For you to remove that at the bottom, you're going to multiply that by one. And that one is special. That means it's square root of 19 over square root of 19. So now that means um, that's how you remove that square root at the bottom because you end up having a six. Because it's more like you're saying, one square root six times six. What is six times six? Let's see. Six times six is equals to 36. What is square root of 36? It's six. So that's why I'm saying that's how you remove um, a square root, which is a denominator. And then you remove it by multiplying by exactly that. And then you know uh, the square root is removed. And then at the top, you have one multiplying that. So it's more like you now have a square root of six over six. Yes, yes. I wonder if I haven't made a mistake on that one. Uh, let me quickly verify. Uh, let's start with a fraction button. Open a bracket, fraction button, one over a sign, 45, uh, close. Then let's go to the bottom and say sign uh, ah. 90. Someone is saying something times turn 60. Hey, a square root of six over three, then a mistake somewhere. Something about a, a Bantu a, But just before, just before I sign out, someone wanted to say something, and I, I suspect someone noticed a mistake. A, I actually forgot my external power. Uh, just for the lighting. Someone wanted to say something. What were you saying there, honorable member? Did you notice a mistake somewhere, someone? I might be breaking. Um... Oh, no, 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 no. We haven't done a mistake, uh, honorable members. This thing, it can further be simplified. Hmm? 
Yes. I think this thing, it can be further simplified. Let's see. When you punch over and you say a square root of six, am I breaking? No. A, am I breaking, guys? It's not breaking that down. The board is black. It's dark. Okay. Uh, Umi, I think let me end it here and then I will try to rework this. And then what I'm going to do, as soon as it's done, I will send it in the group. Then just in case if someone has got a question, then uh, we will actually address it. Uh, on our next lesson but one thing for sure somewhere there is a mistake i will need to try and um detect where the mistake is uh, i'm just not sure whether to suspect those angles or not okay this is what you guys need to remember in case if you don't get your special angle correct then just know your whole answer is affected uh, let's make use of this as the evidence to say if your special angle is not correct, you are going to get everything correct. So, so uh, guys, I will just have to end it here. You know what the code is. So, good people, thanks very much for joining. My name is Desmond, and I'm out.